today's video, you'll see me making this become like that. And this become like that. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. The Italeri kit comes full of detailed parts, but still I need to make some modifications to reach my concept idea. The idea that I'm talking about is to have the aircraft in the hangar at the maintenance facility with its turbine sitting outside. I started with the most obvious part that needed more realism, the exhaust nozzle. By looking at some reference pictures, I started having ideas on how to make that happen. What you're seeing here is a technical drawing that I designed on my computer and then printed it on an adhesive paper that I stuck to the plastic card. And piece by piece, I cut them out and started assembling them. Here's a pre-assembly of the nozzle, and already it's starting to look really good. After painting the nozzle petals and treating them with clear varnish, I went with a slight weathering procedure using oil-based paint. sealed the weathering job with clear varnish which will aid to protect the paint job I just did and also would be a good base for my decals later on. The decal setting solution is a good tool that helps my custom made decals to stick better to the surface. Here again, I'm using the clear varnish to help protect the decals underneath. I'm purposely using Tamiya's copper metallic paint instead of the fancy AK Extreme Metal because I want to obtain this rough appearance on the petals. In order to tame down the copper effect, I cover just so slightly those petals with the AK gun metal. I know 
that you might be thinking that this video is so long. The reason behind that is because this project lasted two years and it was like building three separate models. The turbine, its trailer and the current aircraft itself. And if I wanted to share with you the whole progress, a complete day of video wouldn't be enough. So in order to make it a smoother ride for you, I decided to split this video and the upcoming one into separate chapters, so you can stop, take a break and come back to where you were left. Wait a minute, you should already be on a break, if you're watching this video. And if you're not supposed to, then go back to work and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. After assembling piece by piece the nozzle, it was really motivating seeing that what's supposed to be a concept idea become a reality. And here's the second chapter coming to an end. Stick with me to find out how I turned a simple turbine into a highly detailed one. Unfortunately, there were injector marks on the visible side of the turbine, so I had to fill them out and send them.
I knew that when I will put together the two halves of the turbine, I will be left with a seam line. And that I will have to do some mess to make it disappear. So I messed very carefully the turbine rotor. Thanks to the melting effect of the Italy cement glue, the seam line was almost completely filled. So now all I had to do was to sand it down. Here she is with all its glory. Something unique about recreating a metallic shine on an object is to pre-paint it with glossy black finish and carefully covering it thereafter with a metallic paint without compromising its shiny property. If you look carefully on the reference images of the turbine, you will notice that there are several variations of the shades of the metallic parts, so I chose carefully which parts are shiny and which are opaque. Sometimes I find that some parts are impossible to recreate with the out-of-the-box paint jar. So I tried to layer them with a standard color as a base and thereafter slightly cover them with metallic paint. And on this last stage, I'm trying to kill that shine on the metal part by covering it with a matte varnish. In case you're wondering what's happening here, well, I'm scratch building all those thousands of pipes and features 
that are present on the turbine but not found in the Italeri kit. Here I am, piece by piece, fitting all those parts together. Here I'm comparing the curvature of the original details of the kit with my unique handmade pipes. It was a huge challenge and a great school learning how to find a way to make junctions and strange bends on them. I have found this amazing tool, the punch, that helped me recreate the flanges of those pipes. When you start crafting new stuff in scale modeling, you start looking for the perfect tool for the job. And it's amazing how many smartly engineered parts are out there and you can use and that helps you to reduce the time of crafting those things. I'm using the clear film for food to wrap it around the pipe in order to recreate the effect of an insulation, the material that is usually applied on hot surfaces.
piece by piece and the turbine started acquiring this realistic look to it. I must say that my hard work has now started to pay off. those latches that are usually used for car scale models. But yet again, this demonstrates that ideas to recreate stuff are always limitless.
hundreds and hundreds of creating shapes and bending plastic rods. Now it was time to start painting the whole thing. With that much of details and with all those crowded tiny places, it was inevitable to touch here and there with that wet paintbrush and have to fix that again. If you haven't guessed it yet, yes, I'm adding even more details. I'm using those nylon wires and twisting them to replicate those electric wires found on the turbine. Wire by wire, this thing is starting to look like a complete mess. Ladies and gentlemen, I here present you my small creature, fruit of hard work and very long patience.
Welcome back to this new chapter of this long journey. Thank you by the way for staying tuned for that far. If you're liking my content, please like, subscribe and ring the bell. So far I have invested a ton of hours and month went by while upgrading the turbine and now I'm in a non-return point. Therefore I decided that the upgraded turbine has to sit on a trailer. And here we go again facing the incognito and figuring it all out from scratch. By a first glance, the trailer seemed to be very simple, but slowly slowly I started discovering that some details were pretty tricky to recreate. Like for example the spring slash dampening system, but hey, a new challenge makes it more interesting for me. Voila! Mission completed! Not bad at all!
One of the challenging part while building the trailer was to find a way to hold the turbine on it and be able to somehow remove it when needed. So I had to engineer this detail that you're watching in order to make that happen. What a relief to see it finally happen, and that is perfectly working. Here's a demonstration of the magic happening. During this adventure, I reached a point where I needed to craft some details that were impossible to do by hand. So here we go again for a new challenge. This time, I'm learning from scratch how to 3D print stuff. And what a challenge!
One of the most satisfying things is when you finish painting a part and start applying your custom decals to it. By the way, if you're interested in printing your own decals professionally, check Max Model Decals. They are amazing in doing this job. See the description below for the link to their shop. Guys, what else can I say, apart from thanking you for staying with me along this journey. I hope you enjoyed this experience and I appreciate you leaving me a comment below. On the next episode, you will see the final results of the completed F35 and the whole project. For now, enjoy the final reveal of this current one.